Hello and welcome back to The Alchemical Arts. Today I will be starting my series on cadmium based pigments and I thought I'd start this one off with just a simple cadmium sulfide synthesis um, which is the basis of most cadmium yellows um, that you would be encountering in terms of your artist materials. So essentially cadmium, which I have a big half kilo block here of cadmium. Cadmium is a heavy metal um, that's quite soft and malleable and essentially when you pair cadmium with a sulfur group you get cadmium sulfide which yeah is a yellow uh, insoluble uh, inorganic pigment. If you mix in selenium you'll get cadmium selenium sulfides which make for your red cad reds and stuff like that but as I said We'll just start with doing a very basic cadmium sulfide today um, and then we'll work out all the various variations that you can do on the cadmium pigments in later videos in this series because cadmium is another one of those sort of wonderful um, compounds in the sense that it um, is able to do quite a spectrum of yellows. So you can go from your very light, lemony sort of cadmium yellows all the way through deep yellows, very sort of golden-y sort of colors, very vivid oranges, through to reds and sort of maroon, burgundy sort of colors. Depending on, again, if you use selenium in there or whether you add something like barium sulfate to make it a lighter, version and various sort of precipitation techniques can yield different um, shades but that all takes a lot of tweaking and so I'm still at the early stages of understanding how to make cadmium pigments and so the rest of today's video um, is just looking at one particular avenue for making the cadmium pigment. Uh, again, I had some reservations about doing this because of some potential toxic byproducts. So I ended up opting to do this outside, which meant that I've recorded some of the audio as an overdub after doing the work. So it's a little bit different filming style than normal, but hopefully everything should come out fairly clear and make sense. Um, so my main concern is that the basis of the synthesis is you take a cadmium salt, so like uh, today I'll be using cadmium nitrate, but you could use cadmium sulfate or cadmium chloride, and then you pair it with some sort of sulfur donating group. So today I'll be using sodium sulfide. And my issue with sodium sulfide is that I was at first worried that when you mix sodium sulfide with water it starts to degrade and let off a little bit of hydrogen sulfide gas and it's particularly bad if you mix it with an acid it will let off heaps of hydrogen sulfide and you know hydrogen sulfide gas is not something I want to be exposed to so that was why I opted for outside and thanks to one of my Patreon subscribers who is a chemist he was able to inform me that as long as I kept the solution of um, sodium sulfide uh, alkaline enough and at a room temperature or didn't elevate the temperature the um, evolution of um, uh, the so hydrogen sulfide gas would be very very minimal. Uh, I would still smell it because it's very easily detected by the human nose. It's that classic rotten egg sort of smell that you're familiar with in terms of sulfur um, but it would be a negligible amount and nothing dangerous to deal with. So with that in mind, I proceeded, you know, cautiously and carefully and made sure that I kept everything well organized and yeah, everything was a good result. So we'll, we'll continue into the video and you'll get to see how the process played out. So here in the beaker, we have our cadmium nitrate crystals, which there's about approximately a hundred grams there. And to that we're just going to add some water, which like so, just in order to dissolve to make a fairly saturated solution of cadmium nitrate. Again, just have to stir this to get all the crystals to dissolve. 
given that the liquid is cold and it should end up being quite saturated, this may take a little bit of time. Next up, we have our sodium sulfide crystals, which are these sort of yellow flakes, which we're just going to add again to some water into a beaker here. And I've measured out the amount that will create a saturated solution that will react with hopefully all of the cadmium nitrate. We should have a tiny excess of cadmium nitrate from the end of the reaction based on the available sulfide ions from the sodium sulfide here. One thing I noticed while I was stirring this up, we got some sort of strange greeny brown discoloration, which I think there was a tiny bit of copper or iron residue in the beaker, which may have reacted to create maybe like a copper sulfide or an iron sulfide which was a slight problem, but I managed to overcome that. So just to overcome the problem of the contamination in the sodium sulfide solution, I decided to just give it a quick filter through some cotton wool here. And as you can see up the top, there's that sort of, I don't know why it's gone sort of a, why there's a green colored discoloration in the liquid but as it filters through you can see that it becomes quite clean and this pale yellow even though i believe sodium sulfide solutions are supposed to be clear um i think given to the maybe a lower grade quality of sodium sulfide it's just ended up with a yellow discoloration which shouldn't have any bearing or effect upon the final result hopefully Anyway, this process took a little while, so we'll just skip ahead. Alright, so we have our saturated cadmium solution here down in the bottom beaker with the stir bar going. And I'm just about to drip in the sodium sulfide solution so that we should end up with precipitating out our cadmium sulfide. And we'll have a byproduct of sodium nitrate as well. And as you can see, instantaneously as the drips fall in, a yellow precipitate forms. Interestingly though, due to the fact that the um, solutions are so saturated, I think the, the cadmium sulfide is actually f struggling to expand into the rest of the cadmium nitrate solution and is sort of coagulating in these little strands of colour that are swirling around there due to the agitation. It's important to do this reaction slowly uh, in order to um, produce a better result of the precipitate and if you do it too rapidly there's a chance that you can liberate um, free elemental sulfur uh, sulfur to the cadmium pigment will eventually lead the cadmium pigment to degrade over time and uh, lose its color and its vibrancy and tend towards like a brown black kind of color over time so the production of any sulfur is to be minimized at all costs and so the more saturated the solution is the less likely we're going to produce um, the sulfur So after dripping all of the sodium sulfide into the cadmium nitrate, I ended up with this, which was a very sort of voluminous, orangey looking precipitate with a layer of what looks like unreacted sodium sulfide on top. And I think at the bottom there was also a layer of unreacted cadmium nitrate. And I think this was due to the high levels, high levels of saturation in, in the two mixtures that I was doing. So we just moved on to filtering here, which presented some interesting little challenges that I'll talk about just after this footage. So again, this last little shot here shows that the difficulty of filtering and some of my saturation problems, as I brought up plenty of times, led to a complex filtering process and washing process, which I did get there in the end, um, but 
I think there are better ways that I could have handled doing this. So we're back down here at the forge, or furnace, whatever you want to call it. Doesn't really matter to me. Anyway, um, and so I've loaded just into this tiny crucible here, just a very small amount of the dried cadmium sulfide. And basically all we're going to do is, I'm just going to pop this other little small crucible on top to act as a lid. I'm going to pop it into the, into the forge here and heat it up to 500 degrees. And so hopefully what that should do is, if there is any free sulfur in uh, like free pure elemental sulfur in here, that should burn it off um, in the form of sulfur dioxide, which again isn't the most pleasant gas, but it should be such a minuscule amount and because we're outside it'll just dissipate very quickly. Um, the other thing that it'll do is the current crystalline shape that the cadmium sulfide um, uh, molecules that are in is one particular shape, which I'll have to go and look up and see what that is exactly, but by heating it to 500, what we'll actually do is change the crystal structure of the cadmium sulfide, which will actually lead to a structure that is brighter and stronger um, colour tinting strength. So there's two reasons for this. One, removal of the sulphur, and second, uh, better like crystal structure for better color. So I've turned off the forge after it got up to, I guess I ran it for about 10-15 minutes at a high temperature. Um, my thermometer probe gave me a reading of 900 which is way above my 500 but the thermometer is also just out in the open so it picks up the heat a lot quicker. Um, for those of you interested, I am still in the process of building the electric kiln. It's just taking a little bit longer due to not having 20 amp power supply in the house. So I'm still using the gas, even though the electric will be better. So this is the little moment of truth. Let's get in a bit closer. Did we destroy our colour? And yes we did. See there that I think a whole bunch of the cadmium has just oxidised, some of it hasn't. Um, yeah, so all in all, that kind of heating, I think, is just a little bit too much. And I think we might need to go for a softer, subtler approach. So, after my sort of failure attempt at calcination. This is roughly what I've ended up with, so I just want to grind up some of this now so that we can turn some of it into a paint and have a look at the colour as it is in a paint because this pigment is very orange at the moment. It's hardly what you'd call cadmium yellow, except for maybe you call it maybe a cadmium yellow deep. And so, grinding it up, seeing it in paint form, will give us a better indication of what it actually is like. Um, I think I'm happy with it so far, and I'm pretty pretty convinced that there isn't any free sulfur um, that occurred during the precipitation process, because there wasn't really much activity during the calcination process, except when I overheat it and burnt it. So... All in all, I think this is okay. So we'll give this a quick grind and we'll see where we're at. So I've just laid out about 25 grams of the cadmium pigment here and I have a gum arabic binder, which is for my watercolors. 
and we're just going to start mulling up the pigment into a watercolour paint so that we can do a little bit of testing with it and see what it looks like as a paint. So again, it's just about an equivalent um, amount of binder to pigment here, so 25 grams of each. The binder also has honey, glycerin, and water in it. So pretty stock standard um, watercolor binder. Once we sort of roughly have the dry powder mixed in, then we'll start mulling with the moolah here. side. And interestingly enough, as we start to mull down the pigment particles, it becomes brighter yellow, which is kind of cool. Getting, I think, a little bit closer to the actual color of the paint. Which I'm happy about. I was kind of worried that this ended up a bit too orange to really use as a yellow. Go figure. But this is starting to look quite promising. So you can really see there between like the orange to the more yellow as we integrate it into the binder. So after grinding up the paint for a little while longer and to make sure that everything was evenly dispersed, we ended up with quite a nice yellow um, pigment here, um, and particularly as a watercolour, and I thought I'd just demonstrate out a few little strokes of the colour in order to sort of show. These pans aren't completely dry, but... Just give it a little brush onto some paper here. So in a more concentrated amount, it makes for quite a nice sort of deep goldeny yellow. And as you sort of wash it out further, it sort of gets a little bit more lemony and gee, it's, it's a strong color. I'm really happy with the strength. Even as I water it down, it still manages to provide quite a strong tinting, or strong covering power it's got. I think that's one of the beauties of cadmium pigments is they have a very high opacity. So yeah. All in all, um, I think this was quite a good result for a first attempt at a cadmium pigment, and I think I will try for some maybe slightly lighter ones where I'll use some zinc or some barium in there to make like either a zinc sulfate or a barium sulfate addition, which is, they're both white, so they sort of bring out the yellow in a lighter capacity. And in the next Cadmium episode 2, I think we'll explore the um, addition of selenium, which is how we get our reds. Now, to do that, I need to have a good calcination set up again, so I, I'm going to have to get that electric kiln finished in order to properly do the Cadmium reds. But thanks for tuning in, and I think the next 
video I do will be on some Mars pigments, which are iron, synthetic iron oxide pigments, um, because I need to add them to my color palette for my up and coming watercolor release. So stay tuned, I'll try and get onto that a little bit quicker than I did this video, and thanks for bearing with me this month. Um, lots been going on with the watercolor stuff, but I'll do a little update on that later. Anyway, I hope everyone enjoyed. Remember to like, subscribe, and check out my Patreon if you feel like supporting as well. And thanks for watching.